Hey everybody, this is Chelsea Schaefer and Caitlin Dustoff, and this is The Score, the official podcast of the sport of team roping. This is the Team Roping Journal's semi-weekly podcast, highlighting the team roping industry's top talents and influencers through stories that inspire and connect ropers. We sit down with ropers from the professional ranks, as well as industry icons and producers to delve into topics that make the team roping world tick. This is season two. It will feature even deeper interviews, storytelling, and issue-based coverage, and we are so excited you're here. This episode is brought to you by the Walt Woodard Ropers Collection by Metalab. We'll tell you about it later in the episode. Brenton Hall, who turned 20 this June and hails from the tiny town of Jay, Oklahoma, has had some pretty big success the last few years of his teenage roping campaign. He finished 2018 as the reserve champion, resist all rookie of the year, and finished just outside the top 15 in the PRCA world standings. The year before, he won second in the number 15 World Series of Team Roping finale with Rance Doyle, pocketing $61,000 alone for that win. And that was the year after he took the title in the same event to the tune of $75,000. Now living in Stephenville, Texas, Hall's the young gun that the three-time NFR healer Chase Tryon believed in enough to rope with for a second year in a row. That's a leap of faith that paid off in a big way, with a return trip to the finals for Tryon and a debut appearance in the Thomas and Mac for Hall. Now I've got a confession. Sometimes I dread interviews with hotshot young ropers who have known nothing but success, great horses, and the spotlight their whole careers. I didn't really know if Brenton Hall would be any different. But I was more than pleasantly surprised by this young talent and the grace and charisma he possesses. I'd watched him practice for a couple hours before we talked, and I've got to say, this kid has earned all of the accolades and praise that he gets. Now, here is first-time NFR header, Brenton Hall. Hi, Brenton. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. Good. So... Welcome to the SCORE podcast. All right, thank you. Welcome to being an NFR qualifier. Oh. Has it sunk in? No, it, it hasn't. It hasn't yet. I, I still don't feel like an NFR qualifier. I still feel like a 20-year-old kid. You still are a 20-year-old kid, but yeah. you're a 20-year-old kid that made the NFR, I guess. Yeah, I guess that'll work. That's a good <laughs> way of putting it. Okay. Give us your history, because we don't know you. Tell me, you okay. are from Jay, Oklahoma. Mm-hmm. What was life like as a kid? Life, life and Jay, we don't do much. We don't do much. We have 20, 2,400 or 2,500 people, I think. One stoplight at a good Mexican restaurant. That's about, as a kid, there wasn't a whole lot to do. Does it say of Travis Graves when you no. walk in? No. No. They don't even make a big deal about you guys? No, they don't. We're, <laughs> it's home of uh, Tommy Morrison, Tommy the Duke Morrison. He was a heavyweight boxer back in the day, and that, I think there is a sign in town that says home of Tommy, mm-hmm. but uh, yeah, for they don't say nothing about me and Travis. <laughs> no. <laughs> We're kind of bystanders. So Travis was probably already gone by the time you started roping, right? Was he? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which, well, what, what's crazy about that, or I say it's crazy, but my mom and dad actually grew up, not grew up, but Travis grew up, and my mom and dad actually roped with Travis a lot as a kid. Mm-hmm. My mom roped with him when he was starting out and getting better, and then when he got better, man, like him and my dad roping some of the open ropings Mm -hmm. and then you know he was he was gone though by the time i was Mm -hmm. growing up i was about and your parents were ranchers Mm -hmm. yeah my mom and dad they own a place uh, that's a thousand acres back home in jay gotcha run a bunch of cows horses yeah we run black angus cattle run about 250 head on Mm -hmm. a thousand acres that's about 250 to 280 is about all you can hold up there on that land pretty comfortably Mm -hmm. So did you go to high school? Did you, were you homeschooled? What was I, uh, I uh, actually I went to public school until I was in the eighth grade. I played basketball. It was the only reason I stayed in public school. And I, about that time, I was realizing basketball wasn't really going to be it for me. Mm-hmm. So I started homeschooling, and then from there on out, it was pretty much from nine to twelve, do schoolwork, and then step outside and get to practicing. So did you? What was your arena like at home? And uh, who practiced with you? Well, it's great. What's different about it is I actually didn't start team roping until I was in the... I, I did team rope, but I quit. I healed when I was younger. Like, the first thing I ever roped was a steer. first thing I ever healed was behind Kevin Daniels, actually. Mm-hmm. And I think I was I think maybe eight. I didn't really get a... I roped when I was younger, and then I got bucked off when I was five, and I quit for three years. And then I started back around there. Uh, I roped calves 
predom I only roped calves mm -hmm. until I was until I got the paint horse actually, until I got captain. And that was in the eighth grade, I think. Eighth grade and I got him as a heel horse. Mm -hmm. So as growing up we had a little indoor shed, it was twenty feet wide, I think it's hundred and eighty long. And that's all I did. I roped calves in there. And then once uh once I brought the paint horse, we had an arena at the place, just a little ways from the barn. And it was a nice, just outdoor, regular arena. And that's where I practice every day. I would practice with the Smalls. Mm -hmm. Zach Small made the finals a few years back. That family, I would rope with them during the winter because they had a nice building. They were about 30 minutes away. And then they would come to my house during the summer and rope with me because it was too hot in their building. Mm -hmm. And so we have a lot to cover there. But you guys paid just a fortune for Captain, right? Yeah. No, no. <laughs> yeah, a fortune. He... He, uh, he actually came from the slaughter cell at the Tulsa Stockyards. I don't know how old he was when they got him there. And then uh, he went through quite a few hands. Jake Clay, which is one of my buddies growing up, we mm -hmm. were up together forever. He, he had him. He didn't own him, but he had him, and I bought him from them for not much of a fortune. Mm -hmm. Felt like a lot at the time, <laughs> but once I started winning on him, it wasn't much. Mm -hmm. So did your parents haul you to the U.S. ropings to what what kind of ropings or did you junior rodeo or a well, little I, everything? I junior rodeoed and then once I got old enough to go to like the junior high school rodeos and then the high school rodeos, I did both of those. And my, I went to U.S. ropings mainly. I would say I, there wasn't really the World Series wasn't that big around us mm -hmm. back then. U.S. ropings were pretty big though. Like we would go to Mulvane, Kansas, and then uh, Fort Smith, Arkansas, Tulsa. Guthrie, every time they had a good rope at Guthrie, you'd go there. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I, I actually, when my dad got sick, when I was, I think I was 16, when my dad got sick, uh, I started hauling with a family right down the road, Passmore's is their name, Griffin mm -hmm. Passmore, Jamie's his dad, Jamie and Alicia, and they're, they're a great family. But they uh, they kind of hauled me around. They took me to some Indian rodeos and mm -hmm. the jackpots a lot, and then the Clays took me some. It was, it was good. The World Series finale. Which year did you win the 15? <sighs> hmm. 2016. So 2016 was a big year because nobody can obviously see what you just did, but you just looked at your belt buckle. Yeah, is a U.S. buckle. Yeah. So that was a big year. Yeah, that was a great year for us. Uh, for me, I guess I shouldn't mm -hmm. say us. Uh, Jake's not sitting here because mm -hmm. he was with me during all of that. Um, it was a great year. We won quite a bit. I, I had high call back in the 15 shootout at Oklahoma City with Jake. And Chance Thiessen had second callback, which mm -hmm. was another cool part because Chance and us were good buddies. I think Chance was roping with uh, Trey Yates there. And he ended up winning pretty good there, I think. But me and Jake were high callback, and he takes all the blame for it. But I kind of gave the steer's head back, and he ripped a leg to win that. But later on that week, I won the 12th shootout mm -hmm. with a guy named Buddy Bledsoe, who never heals. And somehow, he he might get mad at me for saying this, but he caught four steers by two feet and he can tell you himself that it never happens and he did it and it was just it was a good deal he went second in that rope and heading too he heads for the most part uh-huh but that yeah, was 2016 i won it me and jake play actually ended mm -hmm. up second call back at vegas and chance Thiessen was first call back with chase crab or jace crab sorry mm -hmm. and uh me and jake won it and chance and jace won second so mm -hmm. it was a pretty good year for us three yeah absolutely yeah. and how um you can tell me you don't want to talk about this, but how, time-wise, how close was that to your dad? Um, well, I remember, gosh, dang, how old was I then? 20, uh, 2015 it would have been, because I just, I just turned 16 when my dad passed away, mm -hmm. I think. Man, it's been a while, but so I don't really, yeah, I just turned 16. He passed away on August 2nd that night. And my birthday is June 11th. I just turned 16. So it had been about a year or so after. I found out that my dad had what they thought was kidney cancer in uh, February of 2015, would be, which was, I don't know, what's that, five months beforehand. Mm -hmm. I found out he had kidney cancer is what they thought he had. And then he went for a checkup, see how everything was coming along, and find out how much, you know, what he was going to have to do to cure it up, to clear it out. And they found out it actually wasn't kidney; it was pancreatic. Which, at the time, I was not. I'm a lot of, I've had a lot of family members that had cancer, and most of them have actually uh, survived it and beat it. But I did not know much about it mm -hmm. per se. I didn't know that pancreatic cancer was the same thing Lou Field had. Uh, 
It's the only cancer that there's literally no cure for. Mm -hmm. Like it, even if you have good, even if it goes good, you get two years max. So uh, I found out that, that was about the same time the Passmores were hauling me around a lot and mm -hmm. stuff like that and they were taking me to Ropens. I think I was a four header at that time. But uh, I'd been a year, probably a mm -hmm. year or so before that. So that was, um, how much did that change everything? It was deflating. Mm -hmm. It was deflating. My dad was bar f by far, by far my best friend in life. Mm -hmm. He was he was everything that I wanted to be growing up and counted on mm -hmm. at any given moment that I could go talk to him about anything. Uh, we never got in fights. Mm -hmm. Still miss him. But you know, it was it was very deflating. I I'd always dreamed of growing up and doing big things. I I, I say that I sat around. I probably sat around for two weeks after he passed away. The night that he passed away, I just got home. Jake, I say this, Jake Clay never loses. He's mm -hmm. the winningest little sucker you <laughs> ever meet. He uh, he won the truck and trailer at Glen Rose. They had a truck and trailer rope in there, and I was with them, and he won the trailer. He was gonna have to stick around, and that night, I was pretty sick, which I didn't even know what sick was, I guess, but I, I thought I was sick. Mm -hmm. So I went home with the Smalls, and they brought me home. And that was the night that my dad passed away. But it was, it was a very deflating feeling for the family. Mm -hmm. Very deflating. Just kind of stopped you in your tracks. I didn't want to do anything for a while, mm -hmm. but I, I, st I kind of made myself get back to roping. I quit roping calves. Mm -hmm. I was still roping calves up until that moment, and I completely quit roping calves. But for one, I didn't have any shoot help, and for two, it's just I didn't like. I hadn't team roped that much. And going back to the calf roping, every time I went and roped a calf, it felt, I, it just felt weird to me to not have my dad there with me. So I started team roping a little more because I felt like it was kind of, which is what he did. He headed and he tripped steers mm -hmm. his whole life and roped calves as a young kid. But it was a, it felt right. It felt more right to be team roping at that time instead of calf roping. It just felt, it felt like I was doing something I shouldn't be doing without somebody calf roping. So I went to the team roping. It was, it was better. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Did your dad know your dream of making the NFR? Like, was that a joint dream? Yeah, yeah. He'd always told me, as a young kid, he said, because my dad was honestly was very, very talented. He had just as much. I, I mean, I say God-given talent because I think everything in this world's God-given. So. My dad had a lot of God-given talent, but he always said that he didn't set his goals high enough. Mm -hmm. He never, he grew up, you know, I'm not saying poor by any means, but not not in a wealthy family where he could run off and follow his dreams per se. But uh, he, you know, he always just told me to never set your dreams low, always set them high, because mm -hmm. he didn't set his high enough. So I would say it was a huge goal of both of ours to do it and he and he told my mom just I guess he told my mom as, as he was getting sick that if I if I would stay keep my nose clean and keep the keep down on the grindstone that I could do it so I guess he was right mm -hmm. eventually he had a good eye <laughs> he's, he's a smart guy <laughs> that's amazing that's yeah. amazing this episode of The Score is sponsored by the Walt Woodard Ropers Collection by Metalab. It's a comprehensive system of bits that are tailored to fit each horse's age and temperament at each level of his development. From O-ring and D-ring snaffles for novice horses to shank snaffles and correction bits for those with more experience, the Ropers Collection will efficiently move a horse through training from beginner to polished competitor. You can learn more about the Walt Woodard Ropers Collection at www.partrade.com. That's P-A-R-T-R-A-D-E dot com. So fast forward then to your rookie year last year. Yes, ma'am. Um, how big of a... Where does your rookie year fit on the scale of like if, if one's disappointment and ten is success? What, how did you feel about your rookie year? You got your partner year. to the NFR. Rookie year was about a... If I, if I look at... So that was my rookie year. My permit year, I went with Casey Stipes. And we went to, I think, 12 rodeos. And I won $400 mm -hmm. total out of those 12 rodeos. I didn't have a horse I really liked. So if I look at it from that year to my actual rookie year, because I went to 12 circuit rodeos, mm -hmm. 
if I look at it from that year to my rookie year, I would say it's a 10 out of 10 on success. Yeah, heck yeah. Because mm-hmm. I, I did so terrible and had such high expectations. But if I look at it as now as my rookie year in a whole, I would say it was probably a 6 out of 10. Mm-hmm. I, I did I did way better than I ex- I shouldn't say way better than I expected. I expected it to do good. But to have a chance to actually make the finals, my whole goal was just to win the rookie of the year, which mm-hmm. didn't happen. Jeff Flanagan's a rope and sucker. Can't <laughs> take sure that away is, from him, yeah. little son of a gun. <laughs> but, yeah, which, uh, congrats to him about that. But, <laughs> you uh, guys were close, though. Yeah, I like, yeah. And it was a close race, and I like Jeff, so I, I couldn't be mad about any of it mm-hmm. whatsoever. And we both had good years for our rookie years coming out. So I'd say it was a six out of ten, probably. Because I, it, I, it was successful because I got, Chase trying to the NFR, and yeah. he's such a tight friend of mine, my partner, which I love the guy to death, great guy. I think you couldn't, like, I was excited that you, I didn't know you, but I was yeah. excited that you were the one that got Chase to the finals because Chase has been busting his tail yeah. like crazy. Um, what has your partnership meant to you with Chase? I can't say enough good things about it. I, I didn't, you know, you, you never know, I guess you always, you meet people and they become really tight friends of yours you never know they're from you're going to be so tight with them or they're mm-hmm. going to be one of your best friends until you meet them but you never I, I hear stories about partners sneaking around the trailers trying not to see their partner ignoring phone calls just yeah. don't want to be around them and I call him about everything you mm-hmm. know, I, I, everything we do is great I, I love working with Chase he's been a great partner for me he kind of runs the reins of the he kind of rides the horse and I'm just hanging on the back so <laughs> I just, I just have to spin steers. If I spin steers, he's happy. He'll, he'll take care of the rest of it. <laughs> now, we talked about Captain briefly. That's the horse you won the 15 on. Yes, ma'am. Is that also the horse that you said you didn't, that the year you won $400 wasn't quite good enough? No. No? He was hurt that whole year. Gotcha. Okay. He I was, was hurt that whole year. He was just hating on Captain. No, I can't <laughs> hate on him. He, most people, I, they associate the paint horse with me. Like mm-hmm. every time I come up, somebody you know, how's, where's the paint? You mm-hmm. know, if if I'm riding a different horse, so I I do I enjoy the paint so much. He's a good horse. Captain's a good horse, but he's not a he's not a special individual whatsoever. But he's a winner. Mm-hmm. He's a really big winner. I had an, a different paint horse. who's a good horse. Anthony Lucia has him now, mm-hmm. but I did, I just didn't get along with him. What's the bay that you won Pialop on? That's Time Bomb. He came from the Smalls. Mm-hmm. Courtney Small. She Courtney Kreitz. Now she got married, mm-hmm. but. She is incredible with horses. I don't know if enough people know that. If she spends time with one, she'll make them good. She'll make them good. Zach might not want me telling you this, but if every time son would get to acting up, he'd send her home and Zach, Courtney would take care of him mm-hmm. for But uh, for him. She's great with him. He's a good horse. Uh, not very many people get along with him. I, I kind of had a, I, I don't know, he's kind of spoiled. He's real mean acting horse. Like He don't like people at all. That you can't give him shots, can't deworm him. If he gets hurt, he's on his own. You just can't. I mean, you really can't do it about it. They tried to. I can't remember what they did. Tried to do his teeth one time. Tried to give him a shot in the main line. He cleared the stock racks that they put him in. He's just. He's a wild animal. So you kind of got to. You got to love him, for what he is, because you can't change him. He pawed some people down hard. Gosh dang! But he's been an awesome horse to me. Mm-hmm. Awesome horse. What would you be doing now if you weren't rodeoing? Was there another option for you? Yeah, I I think there was. I, I, I do a little bit of leather work, make belts and stuff like that, which I'm not saying nothing against that profession mm-hmm. whatsoever. It's hard work, and I don't know if you make enough money. You, actually, you have to really work hard at it to make mm-hmm. a lot of money at that. But it's the same way with rodeo. You have to work hard and make money at that. If you don't rope good, you're not going to win enough. Mm-hmm. But... Uh, uh, successful plan A's. I heard I heard an article. I don't know who wrote it. Might have been y'all actually, <laughs> but where Trevor said successful t- plan A's come from not having a plan B, and mm-hmm. I'm a firm believer in that. If you have a plan A, stick with it mm-hmm. until it's done. And if if it don't ever work out, you didn't try hard enough because mm-hmm. you can do anything if you want to. Hmm. So goals for this year's NFR. Mm. I haven't even said any yet. I guess if if you're going to ask me right now, and I had to tell you, I would I'd want to walk out of there with the gold buckle. I don't I don't know if it's in the in the Ponzi or the scheme of it this year, mm-hmm. but I sure love to. 
but I, I'd like to get out of there with some good money. I need, um, I don't know. I bought my I bought my place down here when I was, you know, I guess at a fairly young age. I was 18, going on 19 when I bought my first place. So it would help help pay yeah. off the place. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Goals for beyond this year's NFR. What's uh, what's your goal for next year? Um, do, are you a goal setter? Do you write down goals? How do you deal with goals? And then what are your goals? Long-term team roping goals. I I swear I don't have any. Mm -hmm. I, know, I know it's wrong. I, I, I just want to do good and have fun. Mm -hmm. and I, if I'm winning, I'm having fun. Mm -hmm. I'm not. I have fun when I'm not winning, too, because I'm a big life person. You, you don't have fun in life. Life's not worth living, so have fun with it no matter what you're doing. If you're doing bad, I mean, slap a smile on your face and keep walking. But I, I've never wrote down goals, per se. I uh, I guess I'm, I'm, more of a, I'm more of a leader. Or not a leader, sorry, a follower. Mm -hmm. Kind of chase, chase enters and stuff, and I just <laughs> go to the rodeos and rope. So I do, I, I like roping, love roping with Chase. So whatever me and him want to do together, goal, I guess the goal is just keep making the finals every year and keep getting a better team. Every time we win, it's mm -hmm. more fun. So, Do you get nervous? Are you, are you a nervous no. person? No. I always said that if, uh, if you put me against the wall, I'll rope better than I ever have. Mm -hmm. So if I got money, I might as well spend it because I, I ain't, it ain't going to help me. <laughs> if I ain't got a dime in my pocket, I can guarantee I'm going to spend you a good steer. I'm, <laughs> I feel like I'm unbeatable at the one-headers that are worth 10000 <laughs> The San Juan, stuff like that, I love those rodeos. Yeah. I feel unstoppable. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, heck yeah. So this year, or round one, what horse are we going to see you on? Everybody wants me to ride the paint. Everybody I've talked to, he's going to ride the paint. The paint's awesome. He just turns. He. But uh, if you catch me on anything besides the bay, time bomb, I'll be surprised and y'all should be surprised too. <laughs> Are you going to, you said time bomb's a little bit of a wild animal. Is time bomb the kind that you can ride in the grand entry no, and then ride in the chance. purse? For, no, not a chance. I don't even want to ride him. In, if, if we were to win the round, I don't even want to ride him in the victory lap. <laughs> You're going to grab a pickup uh, he, horse? Yeah, I swear, if Phil it, it, let me, I'll do it. I would rather <laughs> ride something that's going to buck the whole arena than him in a victory lap. He's terrible. <laughs> I, uh, Puyallup, he did it to me. We had to take a, we didn't have to take very many victory laps this year, but Puyallup and... Uh, Walla Walla, we had to take a victory laps there, and I, it was terrifying. I had to yell at him, shut the gates both times, because I can't <laughs> stop him. <laughs> Patrick was like that with Amigo. Patrick had Yeah, to, that's where mm -hmm. I can't. It's terrifying. He gets to climbing and bouncing, his front feet hit above his ears. It's scary. Oh, I don't gosh. like being involved in it. So, yeah, the paint, I, you can probably count on the paint being in the victory lap. Mm -hmm. Or not the victory lap, the grand entry. The grand entry. Yeah. What, um, what moment are you most looking forward to? Backing into the box, the first grand entry... I don't know. I, I'm so big into just enjoying every little moment in life because you never know when stuff's going to get taken away from you. I think, And I think that's from certain circumstances that mm -hmm. have happened to me growing up. I don't think I was ever like that until until my dad passed. But mm -hmm. since then, I've, I've learned to, you know, every little thing that happens, enjoy it. Because you, you never know when it's not going to happen again. So I could, I mean, not saying this would happen, but I could break my arm not to get to go to the finals, mm -hmm. whatever it is. I could fall get paralyzed being an accident whatever where I was never able to go to the finals mm -hmm. again so I'm just gonna enjoy every single part of it is your mom gonna be there oh yeah every night every night from from the time I get there she'll be there from the time I get there till the time I leave <laughs> she wouldn't miss it have you gotten any advice about going to Vegas anything that that you're gonna listen to anything you're not gonna listen to about how to conduct yourself or how to practice during the day or not practice I haven't I I kind of roll on my own I say I roll on my own schedule a little mm -hmm. bit. I, I don't really, I never had a lot of people telling me how to rope growing up. I have my own kind of style of mm -hmm. how I do things, and I'm not saying it's right or wrong. Could be way wrong, could be way right. I don't know. But I I, uh, I prefer to kind of lay on my own. I don't like being in the party scheme whatsoever. It's not me. I'm kind of a loner. I do like being alone, so I haven't really got a whole lot of advice. The only thing Dustin e told me if uh, if they let you, if your room don't have a balcony, you ought to upgrade it. <laughs> so That's some sound advice. Yeah. Sound advice. Wonderful. Well, thank you oh, so thank much you. for letting Thanks me for crash me. your practice session. Oh, she did crash, yeah. <laughs> made Chase wrap unwrap steers by itself. <laughs> Worked awesome. out good for me. <laughs> Wonderful. It's good for Chase. <laughs> yeah, he needs to do something a little on his own. He ain't used to it. <laughs>
<laughs> thank you very much, Brent. You bet. Thank you. Remember, this episode was sponsored by the Walt Woodard Ropers Collection by Metal Lab. Comprehensive system of fits tailored to fit each horse's age and temperament at each level of his development. Check out cartridge.com to learn more about the Walt Woodard Ropers Collection.